your intelligence. It's just that hurting other people is, is one of the things that diminishes your intelligence faster than anything else. He would turn it right back into the organization. He didn't spend anything on himself, except maybe, you know, for travel expenses and bare essentials. Uh, but everything was invested in uh, glorifying Krishna. And so everybody knows Hare Krishna now. I don't think there's a person in the world that hasn't heard of the Hare Krishna movement. But very few people have heard of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Only people who actually become disciples or devotees. Because he didn't use all this material opulence to glorify himself. He used it to glorify Krishna. So uh, that was a perfect example of using money for a spiritual purpose. Of course, that other other his disciples, you know, they weren't on the same level of advancement, and they made a bunch of mistakes and misused all that money. But that's a different story. He, his use of the money was impeccable. And therefore, he was able to create a huge network of devotees and temples and different projects all over the world in a very short time, just a few years. So we don't have that same talent in business. <laughs> I always ask for advice, you know, from Uddhava or one of my other disciples who understands uh, business concepts. Um, I don't like to handle the money myself because I'm, I'm really not very good at it. Um, I'm a visionary. <laughs> I like to dream. I like to, to envision how we can engage our uh, material talents, propensities, energies, resources, uh, and time. Uh, in activities that have good results, not only for us, but for people in general. You know, I mean, what, what really motivates me is when I walk down the street and I see, or, or, or I go to the market or something like that, and I see how people are suffering. You know, I, I see how they're in material consciousness, how they're so sad, you know, or angry. Huh? They're like, they're in rage inside, you know, and they're just like barely barely covering it up and somehow getting through the day, you know? I mean, you see the people like this, and um, it's like, I want to do something to help them. Uh, because I remember how it was to be that way. I used to be like that, or similar to that. And it was painful, it was horrible. And there was no way out. Uh, because in the material world, if you're in material consciousness, you know, that's it. You know, e either you're uh, on top of the food chain or you're being exploited. <laughs> it's really only the only choice in the material world. Uh, so, uh, both of those are miserable in different ways. Uh, maybe the people on the top are a little bit less miserable. That's about <laughs> the only advantage that they have. But if those people could take that energy, that, uh, that accumulated material energy, and they could engage it in Krishna's service, Oh, they would just be able to, like Uva. Uva is a good example. The way he's engaged his material opulence and skill in spiritual purposes. I mean, he's a, he's a great example of how you can take material energy and spiritualize it by engaging it in a spiritual purpose. So, uh, I'm really, it's really too bad he couldn't make it today. And you couldn't make it yesterday, Tony, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really wanted to get you guys together because he's also, you know, very business savvy and uh, you guys would probably have a lot, you know, that you could talk about in that way. Um, I'm not very business savvy. I'm like, you know, you give me money.